Hi and welcome to this new episode of Your Next Trade. Today we're going to be talking about this epic short squeeze. So what we covered in Your Next Trade last week is the market was mostly looking at the CPI that was coming this Thursday. Actually, the CPI, if you look at the months on months and the year on year numbers, the core CPI was uh, worse than expected. And that was conferred by the move that we've seen in the euro dollars that we've seen in the bond market. But actually, the positioning of the equity market based on mostly um, options, uh, mostly put options, where before that we had more than 10 billions that were for options expiring Thursday, Friday, that created a short squeeze uh, from the lows that we've seen right after the CPI and at the open of the S&P market. So if you look at the week-to-date asset, perf uh, asset performances, actually the performances for uh, stock market, we are talking the S&P here, down 1.6%, on the week, the, the Nasdaq down 3%. Uh, week on week, the market was pretty weak. Uh, that is the same with uh, the picture for the risk on risk off, where the US dollar is very still very strong. Um, only 0.5% if you look at the DXY. But actually, if you look versus the Japanese yen, when we're going to be switching into the technical analysis, making new highs at uh, above 148 now. Uh, so the picture roughly is the same, which is a bear market where you're going to have squeeze that are very strong in terms of, of, um, of variation over one or two days. So now we are talking one to two days. This summer, we talk about, you know, three weeks when the market rallied from the 3650 to the 4300. So shorter and shorter, very violent, where everyone or some of, of you are still expecting a market to bounce. So on the Monday, on the Thursday, is it the, is it the bottom of the market? Have you seen those moves? And then the picture stays the same you are in the bear market. So that explains as well what the WTI oil has been weak on the, on, on the week, where after the OPEC excitement, now we are going back into fundamentals, which is telling you that the world is slowing, that we might go into recession, and that means that there might be a, a mismatch between uh, supply and demand. If you look now at the services picture, you can see that literally two thirds is negative for the week. Only a, a small chunk is, is, is up for the week by 2%, but you see that the semiconductors really struggling. First, because you have the, uh, the, the end of the economic cycle and as well between the, uh, um, uh, the issues that we have between China and the US. So US is really asking any uh, uh, company that is making business in China to stop making this business, business. So there is a big change, there is a big driver, and this, that explained a lot why we are seeing AMD, Amat Materials, all those names that are coming with warning, and we are talking warnings not only uh, um, um, margins, but we are talking revenue. So the overall picture on the week to date is, is pretty much ugly. Now, if you look at the rates, and I think this is the part that is interesting, um, we closed on Friday with the US 10 years above 4%. Uh, so literally what has been happening is the credit market uh, this week has been telling us that the Fed is probably going to be more hawkish than it was a week ago due to this higher CPI. The the yield curve, which is looking at the 10 versus the 2, is more or less the same, around minus 40 bips to minus 50 bips, so not much of a change. But the most interesting one is this, is this table. So this table, you remember looking at the terminal rate. So the terminal rate is where the market is expecting the Fed to be at max uh, hiking. Last week, we were at 95.12, whereas the last on Friday was 94.76. So if you look here, that will give you on the week a change of 35 bips. So the terminal rate from one Friday to another moved by 0.35%. So if people are telling you that the CPI number on Thursday was a good number and it was the, the most hawkish number for the Fed, that is just not true. The credit market is now paying 35 bips more uh, for the Fed uh, to stop the hiking. So instead of having the Fed going into the 4.5, 4.75 maximum rate, now 
we are pricing more than 5% for maximum rate, meaning first that we probably gonna have 75 bips hike at the start of November, then another 75 bips in December, another 25 bips in um, uh, going into next year. So overall, the picture is for a much more, as I said again, hawkish Fed, that is not uh, very uh, bullish for the equity market. So what we had on Thursday, again, is mostly driven by options, by the positioning of the market, which was extreme. You squeeze everyone for a couple of days, then you go back into fundamentals. If you look at the VIX, as I've been saying over and over, the VIX is distorted because it's a one month uh, expiry. So you'll be taking all the uh, options expiring in one month. But the thing is, the market is more and more driven by these short-term options. So we are talking daily, Thursday, uh, which was for CPI, Friday and weekly. Uh, that's true for single names. That's true for the, for the SPY. That's true for the S&P. So interestingly, if you want to do a bit of research, if you look at the 3600 call that were expiring on Thursday on the S&P, they went from 50 cents to 80 dollars. Okay, so you were buying one call 50 cents at 50 cents premium for the 3600 as we closed around 3680. Literally, your 50 cents became $80. So, what we had before, uh, looking at the GME of this world and all those crazy positioning, is more and more the case for the SPY, for the SP, for the indexes, and for the big uh, stocks. So, Let's now switch into technical analysis. And we're gonna be starting with the S&P, looking at the ES, which is the S&P futures. So the picture is on the daily, more or less the same. If you look at the weekly, this is exactly interesting to see that the move has been, uh, between the lows and the highs have been pretty big, but we are back to square one, which was more or less the level as last week. As I said last week, uh, 3580, 3600 was and still a very important level. We managed to bounce on the week and actually Thursday was, as I said, quite epic, but the driver is still the same. If you look at options, if you look at, sorry, not options, if you look at volume and where was the fight in the past, there is a good chance that we're gonna go into the 3400, then we are talking about 2900. Now the Nasdaq key, Nasdaq key actually is making new lows. So if you think that in that cycle, uh, we are, uh, or the beta uh, companies uh, are driven this market as well, we are making new lows. Russell, which is more US oriented, has been hovering around the same level. So what is the next driver? As I said before, this is the earnings. The earnings season started on Thursday. We had a lot of banks. Uh, we came on board uh, JP Morgan, uh, Morgan Stanley on Friday. We're going to have on Monday Bank of America and some others. Uh, if you look at the DAX, that's the same picture. Uh, I think we broke the support. We have to come down. Now looking at EEM, why looking at emerging market? Because there is a big week coming in China where the Politburo uh, will be starting to sit. Um, and we're going to have a lot of headlines. I'm looking at EEM because EEM is mostly China. If you look at EEM and if you look at EEM versus the SPY, uh, it feels to me like we might be going lower. So for me, this is for the next week. This is the, the next trade to be looking at is earnings, obviously, and looking at China and then anything that will be coming from China. If you look at XRT, if you look at, at retail, retail has been holding. It's going to be very important this earning season, not only this earning season, but coming, co coming into a very important season for the retailers um, with Thanksgiving and Christmas. KBE, I mentioned KBE last week. Actually, KBE, the banks versus the S&P were doing pretty well, and there has been a confirmation with JP Morgan, Wells Fargo on Friday outperformed the market. Then finally, if I look at FXI, which is China, the big Chinese, uh, uh, companies versus the SPY, uh, you can tell here on the weekly chart that there is a good chance that we might go lower. So have a look at China, have a look at emerging market because that could be the next uh, next tell on your way down. Euro dollar, Euro dollar, the chart is still the same. Uh, this is the trend. We are bang in the middle of the trend where actually we have been trading for two or three days around the $97, uh, uh, 97 uh, on the Euro dollar. Dollar-Yen, 
picture is very ugly. We are 148.72 at the close. Um, I've done a video, uh, I think it was a month ago, explaining why the, this was a one-way one traffic uh, um, um, trade. Why? Because as long as the Bank of Japan is very stubborn in not hiking rates, uh, the only way for this to compensate and to uh, kind of attack the Bank of Japan is to go through the FX. Um, you have seen probably the headlines that for four days uh, there was no trading in the uh, Japanese 10 years. So that tells you that there is pressure coming, that pressure is still there. Uh, recently, 10 days ago, the Bank of Japan intervened at 145. Now we are 2% higher. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what the Bank of Japan will do next. Same with the renminbi, looking at CNH versus USD. Uh, we are now above 7.22. Um, interesting to see what the Politburo will be saying. And finally, looking at CL1. So CL1 um, coming back around the 80, 85 level on the risk of a slowdown, I think the positioning now, the, the pain trade is actually for, uh, for oil to go lower now. Uh, on the, if you look at the seasonality of oil uh, going into the end of the year, that is normally not a very good seasonality. Um, I still want to believe that it might go lower and the pain trade is for this to go lower. Going into this week, what has been happening? So we had the CPI extreme positioning. So uh, here this is, we get the CPI release at 1.30 UK time, where we were around the 36.30. Uh, we crashed around the 3500. 30, then for almost 20 to 40 minutes, we were hovering around that level. Then we start to kick in uh, um, where, um, Mostly investors that were buying short-term puts uh, started to cover them. So that means the, uh, the dealers had to hedge, the gamma started to kick in. And you go, when you have such a big move on the S&P on the futures, uh, this is short squeeze, this is positioning, this is extreme positioning, this is daily positioning. And literally you see this, this big move. Then on Friday, uh, we had uh, several news. We had the Michigan inflation expectations well, actually were worse than expected, both on the one year and the five years. And then we start to come down. So um, if you look at this big move, we are talking 200 points in 24 hours and you're back to the middle. So it's a retracement of 50%. Um, and the question is still the same. What about the 3580, 3600? I'm always looking at the S&P here. The next driver is going to be the S&P. But looking at this chart, which is still the same and is very important, is the correlation between the US 10 years, the US Treasury, and the S&P futures. As bonds have been selling, and now we are above 4%, we know now that the stocks, the correlation is close to, uh, to one. They are following. Um, and actually, there is a good chance that if there is another leg uh, down uh, for bonds, that uh, stocks will we, we'll carry on. So that won't be surprising after the 30 bips, 35 bips on the euro dollar, that actually the move on equity is, is coming. And finally, for this week, uh, still a mess in the UK, a lot of headlines um, where... Uh, the chancellor was uh, fired, uh, but the 30 years is, is still very messy. So you do have like big moves. So this is a, a G7 uh, country, 30 years where we go over th uh, two to three days be at five, between 5% 5 to 4.2%, then back on the day to 4.8%. So if you want to be making the, the Twitter jokes, you can argue that um, the UK is becoming more and more like Italy, but they don't have the food, they don't have the good looking uh, ladies. So not necessarily a good thing. And that tells you that there is uncertainty and the market, even if it's limited to the UK, um, don't, don't make any mistake. The ECB, even the Fed is looking at these developments uh, because the story is more or less the same. When the central banks try to raise rates, try to stop quantitative tightening, there is stress in the market. Finally, just in terms of how the market has been behaving uh, on any single day, what is interesting is people before the weekend are just uh, um, 
unloading their position. Uh, so over the last five Fridays, we have been down more than 1% on average. So 2.3% this Friday, 2.8% the, the, the Friday before. Um, and that gives you the positioning as well, which is interesting for the OPEX, uh, where next week, going into next week, so let's go into the next um, table, which is this one. Next Friday, we get the OPEX. So the market, as I said, is more and more driven by those short-term options. Um, that was very clear on Thursday. On Friday, we get the OPEX. Um, what are the next drivers? In terms of next drivers, really, the part that is important is we got China, 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 China. So China, we're going to have a lot of headlines. Um, this is the Politburo that will decide for the next five years what's going to be the policy. Um, they are not going to change overnight the COVID uh, situation, so it's it's going to be the same. So first thing first, it's going to be China. Then most important thing as well is the earnings. So you can see for the earnings, we start pretty light, four, or roughly four here that I have on my screening. Then we get more, more, and on Thursday, this is, the, this is really uh, the, the big day. Um, as we are going into this week, so this is the week here, the second week, but literally the week after, this is where we're going to have many companies, uh, especially the Apple, the Microsoft of this world. So driver for this week, China, China Communist Party, we're going to have the earnings, we're going to have the OPEX. As always, we're going to have some macro numbers. We are talking the housing, uh, the new permits on Wednesday to give a bit more color on how the, uh, the US housing is doing, if this is holding. Interesting number, which is going to be the Japanese inflation on Friday. And as always, you should be looking at all the speakers from the uh, from the Fed. We are talking uh, the Bostik on, on Tuesday. We are talking Kashkari on, on Wednesday and some others. Why? Because we want to know more about what is the Fed expectations uh, going into the FOMC, which will be uh, on the start of November, uh, of November. Finally, you need to keep in mind that uh, the Fed um, is doing a bit of quantitative tightening. So they are withdrawing some money out of the system. Um, so you're going to see that um, that was on the, that was um, um, mid, mid month, at the end of the month, there are a lot of bonds that are expiring. And what happens is the opposite of quantitative easing. When uh, there was a lot of quantitative easing in the market, there was a good correlation with the S&P doing well. Here, this is the opposite. Mid-month, end of the month, you do have like some drivers. Why? Because those bonds are maturing and they go out of the system. So Fed balance sheet is uh, going down. And more or less, this is the driver. So if you got any position in stocks, in, 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 um, in um, XLF, in ETFs, um, be uh, looking at the earnings of the companies that could have an impact. Uh, look at the uh, Chinese uh, headlines. There's going to be a lot of headlines as well around the UK and finally around housing market. So this is it for today. If you got a question about the 4x4, if you want to know more about how I can help you with the 4x4 video series or the mentoring, if you're keen on joining a growing community, so we are sharing more and more, please uh, join for free on Discord. Uh, and you can send me an email on, at greg at duponttrading.com. So again, big season earnings coming um, from Monday onwards. And actually look at all those positioning that are short dated and get better with understanding of options. I hope it helps and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.